Hey guys, a couple of months ago, uh, well probably nearer three months ago, there was an incident uh, downtown as I was driving past with Debbie, there was somebody collapsed face down on the floor with uh, a number of people just, you know, standing around not really knowing what to do. Um, I happened to have a uh, space, or well, a number of space blankets in the boot, so I stopped, uh, grabbed one, and went over and uh, managed to wrap the guy up in one and then somebody else came along with a blanket and uh, I've always had a keen interest in uh, medicine and first aid and that sort of thing but I've never really done anything, well I never have done anything official about it, it's just been more of a, uh, an interest over the years. Um, but just before I started to uh, find out what was going on, the uh, fast response paramedic uh, car arrived and uh, he just took over and that was the end of that really. Um, but I thought, you know, if that guy hadn't arrived then, would I have really wanted to have uh, uh, taken charge of the scene and uh, helped this guy out? And, uh, you know, without being able to prove any uh, sort of skills. And the answer probably is, well, no, I would, certainly I would have done, but I wouldn't have been comfortable about it. So I thought, you know, that's probably the time to uh, do a recognised... Uh, first aid course. Um, I did a, an online first aid course, pretty comprehensive. At the end of it you get a recognised uh, certificate. It's valid for three years and you get eight months access to all of the information uh, that you used on that website for the training. Uh, so you know, I, I, renew, I review it every month or so because you know, you've got to get it drummed into your head so when you're in some sort of situation uh, where you can help somebody it, it all comes back um, you know automatically almost so yeah I took the test uh, when was it 20th of March so it's only about six weeks ago and as I say I'm still renewing reviewing all of the information I've got a couple of books that I read through regularly just to get all the information uh, sunk in and it's something that we've never I don't think we've ever discussed health and safety or first aid or anything for the uh, the TV engineers forum that, that this is really for but obviously any of my subscribers can see this particular video um, so I thought it might be interesting to find out who of the forum members have actually got any first aid training um, what's in place in the workplace and uh, and that sort of thing I put together a, a, you know, a sort of basic to medium uh, first aid kit. A lot of it bought from uh, eBay as uh, as usual, and I was just about to um, replace some out of date uh, gluco tabs that I carry. There's a, a diabetic kit in there for anyone with a hypoglycemic attack. I thought, oh, well, this might be uh, a, an interesting video <laughs> to make and, uh, yeah, get some information from the forum members and, and in fact, anybody on uh, my channel who, who subscribes and watches uh, some of the videos, it'd be interesting to see what first aid training people have got or done, uh, especially if they're in a, you know, recognised workplace, being self-employed, it, you know, doesn't really apply for me but I thought it'd be interesting. So I thought we'd go through uh, the first aid kit. I was going to check for everything being in day and uh, replace these tablets so I just thought I might as well show everybody what I keep. This is uh, this is in the car uh, wherever I go. Obviously that's at home normally so we've got easy access to uh, any of it. Um, I just thought we'd run through what we've uh, what we keep obviously everybody knows the uh, the basic rules I'm sure the, uh, the first thing is make sure you don't put yourself in harm's way and after that uh, make sure you do no harm uh, this uh, on the outside is a rebreathe pocket mask this is to allow you to give uh, CPR without uh, contact with the patient's face. It's just a face mask and you can blow uh, through here. There's a little membrane in there to stop anything coming back out that uh, may be uh, 
contaminating you if you get it onto uh, onto you. Uh, obviously that's a disposable item once you've used that you would uh, replace it but not expensive. Um, yeah you know a lot of this stuff isn't necessary for your basic first aid kit but I thought you might as well uh, you know have a fully kitted out bag even if uh, I'm not able to use it myself, uh, you know, there's a stethoscope in there, um, uh, blood pressure taking equipment, I can use that, and, uh, but it's not really going to be used in most first aid uh, instances, um, but if you've got somebody who's far more advanced, a doctor on site perhaps without any equipment, if you've got it all, or a lot of stuff here, uh, it may be helpful, and at the prices a lot of this stuff is, it's you know, it made sense for me to buy it. We've got a uh, in-ear thermometer. Uh, it's a brawn, and uh, it's got disposable pieces that go on the end. And uh, this is quite a clever one because it pre-warms the uh, the tip, uh, so when you put it in the ear, it doesn't lower the temperature and, and make for an inaccurate reading. Um, uh, again. 40 50 pounds, I think these are. That's that. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, blood sugar tester. Um, it's got a pen to prick the finger, test strips in here, and you just turn the machine on, slide the test strip in, and that will give you a blood sugar reading. Uh, instructions, uh, spare, disposable uh, sharps for the finger pricking side of it. Oh, this is a uh, pulse oximeter, and uh, you just slide that over your finger, like you would see uh, in hospitals and that will take your read your pulse and uh, get your oxygen levels and my pulse at the moment is 71 this is inaccurate your uh, blood oxygen level should be in the high 90s normally uh, this for me is reading 93 and i think it's about six uh, counts out but at the price and having tested it on a number of people we all give the same uh, results, so you've just got to bear in mind there is that lower than normal reading. Um, not ideal, but again, for the price, probably can't expect uh, anything else at that level. Uh, a couple of manuals for the blood glucose monitor in there, just in case you forget how to use it, <laughs> but it's so simple. Uh, this is a blood pressure cuff. Again, very easy to use if you've uh, ever had a bash with one of those. Don't expect it to be used very often, if at all. But I have tried it and uh, it uh, works just fine. Top pocket here, we've got a whole load of disposable gloves. Obviously, gloves on as soon as you have to deal with anybody. In this top pouch I also keep a, it's an accident report book officially, but I would use it for writing down uh, any information uh, whilst you're at a scene of a accident or whatever, patient's details, medications they might be on, whatever. And a pen. Uh, these are again some powder free vinyl gloves. Vinyl is used these days uh, opposed, as opposed to latex gloves because some people can be allergic allergic to latex uh, gloves. So uh, yeah, it's always vinyl these days. Look on the other side. In fact, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to repack these as we um, as we go because I was quite happy with the way this was all packed and I don't want to forget where everything was so just bear with me while we pack this top and side out again.
surprising how much you can get in these little kit bags. Again, this was a bag bought from eBay with certain things already in it, which I've then just added to. You can get a basic first aid kit in the bag. I think it's about £100, something like that, but I've added uh, a fair bit more to it than you would normally get. Uh, right, these things here are disposable uh, face masks. Again, allow you to give CPR without any contact with the patient. They just fold over the face and again there's a little diaphragm sort of flap that stops anything coming back uh, towards you. So four or five of those. It's got various, uh, well there's an apron so you don't want stuff all over you. Gloves again. Uh, emergency rescue blankets, very cheap on eBay. Uh, but can make a massive difference to somebody who uh, is uh, out in the cold and or perhaps lying on the floor injured. Cost virtually nothing. Uh, what have we got here? This is blue detectable adhesive tape. All right, what else have we got? Uh, yeah, basic blue uh, detectable plasters. Sealox. Uh, this is uh, hemostatic. Uh, granules and uh, as you can see there it's a uh, temporary traumatic wound treatment for life-threatening emergency bleeding promoting rapid coagulation um, uh, and this will stop bleeding uh, if used properly even if the patient's uh, you know on a blood thinning uh, medication like heparin or warfarin um, instructions on the back as to uh, how and where to apply it and in what situations. This isn't cheap actually, this is, uh, this is pretty expensive uh, but if, uh, if that does the job then it's well worth, well worth having. Another space blanket. Uh, yeah, we've got washproof plasters, uh, assorted plasters. Uh, little um, safety pins for bandages, more safety pins there. We have, uh, I bought a burns kit and that's been incorporated into this as well. Uh, more waterproof plasters. This is Astroplast Burn Aid, it's a sterical sterile pad and that's placed over a burn. These are little alcohol wipes so that's just for cleaning uh, any wounds you can pour water over a wound to, to clean it but obviously the sterile wipes are uh, best yeah that's pretty much that in that size so let me just see if i can pack this away without making a dog's dinner of it just contains uh, stuff for diabetics and that's what I wanted to change. Uh, Gluco tabs were out of date uh, in July actually so I'll put that in there with the new one. We've got uh, a drinkable solution, uh, glucose tablets and a glucogel. You just snap the top off and give that to the patient. It's a fast acting, acting dextrose I don't suppose that would go in there, I didn't think so. So I'm going to swap that over actually and leave the other one just uh, loose. So, Hyper Wallet. We've got all sorts of uh, triangular bandages. Got the 
probably like take all of these out. We have some, it's like a stiffed foam, stiffed, a stiff foam. This is uh, handy for uh, putting around a broken arm and bandaging to uh, immobilize the, the brake. And that just unfolds and can be molded to whatever shape you need. That's that pouch. So yeah, triangular bandage is really, really useful. It can be uh, used in all sorts of uh, ways. Next pouch is all of the sterile uh, dressings. We've got small, medium, large, yeah, just uh, finger dressings. There's just yeah, all sorts of dressing that you can uh, imagine. These unfortunately all have expiry dates as you would expect, uh, but uh, the majority are at least a few years uh, away. Okay, now we, as I say, part of the burn skit, we have uh, sterile pads, and you can see how that's applied to the uh, to the burn, and uh, got a whole range of uh, sterile finger wraps. They're all sterical, uh, so we've got finger wraps, bigger pads you know, for your arm, leg, whatever. Thing full. Uh, here we have some saline, well, it's called Stero Wash, it's a uh, sodium chloride uh, solution. And uh, if you've got something in your eye or something in a wound that needs washing out, you just snap one of these off, twist the top, and then you can just squirt that over the injury or gently into the eye to try and wash out any debris that's, uh, that's in there. Mm, not seeing an expiry date. So. On those. Oh, now these are a good idea. This is an instant ice pack. So if you've, uh, you know, pulled a muscle, had something whack into your leg, and uh, you need something instantly cold, uh, you can use uh, one of these packs. I can't even remember how to use it. Uh, squeeze alongside of inner sachet until it bursts. Yeah, there's an inner sachet, shake the whole pack up and then place it onto the swelling or whatever the issue that needs cooling down is. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it in there. There's some airways that uh, the first aider would never use, but a doctor may well require. There is a stethoscope uh, in, I think it's uh, packed separately in the car. Again, not for uh, for my use, unless I'm just practicing taking blood pressure, then you would use it. Um, oh, unless it's in here. <laughs> Yeah, it's all in there. I'm just going to chuck these back in and I'll just show you what's in this uh, this top pouch. Uh, firstly, we've got a couple of pairs of scissors for um, cutting uh, through clothing, etc. There are some lights. There's a little push button. He says, yeah, just for checking pupil responsiveness. And inside there we've got uh, a uh, well, two stethoscopes actually. I didn't realise the kit came with one. I'd already ordered a separate one. And uh, again, not really for me to use, but there may be other qualified people on any particular scene that may uh, not have equipment with them. And uh, that's pretty much everything that we're going to keep in this uh, first aid kit. Probably enough for your basic you know, first aider and uh, hopefully they won't ever need to use it but it's kind of comforting to know <laughs> that 
that it's uh, it's available and uh, I've had the training uh, to uh, to actually use some of it correctly. Right, next thing I'm going to go on to is uh, an AED. It's an external, sorry, an automated external defibrillator. Uh, these are you know, the sort of things that hopefully you've got in the workplace. Uh, more and more are becoming uh, available in public places and uh, this one again I bought recently. About to do the training course for this but really it's, uh, it's very very simple and uh, virtually anyone can use it because it gives you voice guidance with pictures uh, on the unit, uh, shows you how to place the electrodes and all that sort of thing. This is the uh, Zoll AED Plus and it's in my opinion probably one of the best ones on the market because uh, it has special electrodes with a centre pad um, that monitors the uh, compression depth and frequency when you're doing CPR. Uh, so um, I think a big failing of uh, most people's CPR is they don't do compression uh, depth correctly uh, and perhaps the frequency isn't enough. So this AED will guide you and it will tell you uh, whether the, see, the compressions are good, too shallow, uh, wrong speed and it will try and speed you up or slow you down accordingly by uh, a use of a, an inbuilt metronome. Okay. Of course these pads are not uh, cheap, uh, the CPRD pads, the adult ones are about £120. Um, obviously if you're privately funding an AED it's not going to be used very often if it's in the workplace you know that's a different story because the company's uh, you know paying for it. Mm. Uh, also this uh, particular one has the longest expiry date of any AED. Uh, in this case the pads expire in a little under five years time so unless it's used uh, this is going to be good for pretty much the next five years which uh, for the circumstances I'm carrying it in you know it's perfect you don't want to be forking out that level of money with a one-year expiry date. Now obviously there are uh, paediatric uh, pads as well. Um, paediatric pads are about 65 I think 65 or 70 pounds Unfortunately, the expiry date on these, for some reason, is uh, is only two years. Um, not quite sure why that is. Over the other adult uh, pads, um, just for clarification, uh, baby or in infant is up to one year old. Uh, pediatric up to uh, eight, and then anybody over eight. Uh, depending on their body weight is classed as an uh, as an adult. There are a whole pack of uh, user instructions, administrator's guide, uh, compliance certificates and all that sort of thing. In this case uh, this one has been updated to the latest firmware and uh, they've uh, changed slightly the way that it works and you can actually buy some new stickers to go over a couple of the pictures on this AED so it, uh, it's following the voice commands with the pictures. So I'm just going to take this out. This particular one runs on these batteries uh, which I've got up here. They are uh, Duracell Ultra Lithiums and they are the 3 volt uh, 123A I think is the uh, description. But they're pretty reasonably priced if you go and buy them off of eBay. If you bought them from an AED supplier they're charging you know over a hundred quid 
but it is not a dedicated battery pack uh, which needs to be either replaced uh, when it uh, expires uh, or is faulty and they can be really really expensive where this one is literally just the, uh, the batteries can be changed uh, quite cheaply um, I'm not going to do that but to show you but there are 10 batteries all under here and after you've fitted new ones there's a little reset button to press to tell the unit that uh, it's got new batteries uh, now this one I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that I can't see the display but in that window there should be a small green tick now if that small green tick is there then this unit is ready uh, to be operated and uh, we'll just lift up the lid this lid uh, combines uh, as a um, oh, it's, it, you can see here it can go under the uh, base of the neck to get the neck and head positioning correct for CPR but of course you would only use something like this if there are no suspected uh, head neck back injuries uh, but it does double up uh, for that purpose the adult pads are already in here and there's instructions there and you just would tear this open and on here it's you've got the sequence how to apply them uh, and well, you know, it's not very clear uh, you can see there is a center pad and that is placed between the nipples uh, uh, to help alignment and that pressure pad will monitor your compressions as you give them as I mentioned before there is a self test function so this will test itself every well I think the frequency is variable okay um, but as long as that green tick is in here then this is ready to uh, to go you can instigate a self test by pressing and holding the uh, standby button which I'll perhaps do now see the light spinning around actually I think I've just turned that on rather than activated the self -test. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was okay. It was just going through its uh, self test, and uh, yeah, you can see the the process here. And this will run you through in lights, uh, and tell you what to do if uh, indeed a shock is required. Now, unfortunately, there's only two heart arrhythmias that can be shockable. And I'm going to read this off the screen so I don't cock it up, and. Uh, yeah, obviously if somebody's flatlined, i.e. there's no electrical, electrical activity in the heart, a defibrillator will not help in that situation. What you need to do then is carry on CPR and hope to God the ambulance arrives quick with, uh, with drugs, because that's the only way uh, that person's heart will be started up again. Um, Right, sorry for the delay, I want to make sure I actually get this right rather than rely on my memory and then look like a complete prat. Um, two shockable waveforms, uh, ventricular tachycardia, they, you know, they either call that VT or VTAC, and uh, ventricular fibrillation. Uh, both are shockable by uh, the unit. Uh, one is uh, just a sort of irregular uh, electrical pattern where the heart's really not doing anything much at all uh, and this can correct that and kick the heart back into a proper rhythm where it can then pump blood around and uh, uh, ventricular fibrillation is the uh, uh, it beats very very fast and 
again that can be corrected by an AED. Uh, again these are not cheap, um, this one's about £1200, I've said how much the, um, the actual pads cost, but apparently in the UK 250 people die from sudden cardiac arrest every day. In America the figures are a thousand people die every day and it doesn't matter it can be anybody you know children athletes you me absolutely anybody can suffer from a sudden cardiac arrest um, the the figures uh, for the use of, uh, of one of these I think after three minutes uh, the chances of survival go down by about 10% per minute so you know, by the time an ambulance has arrived, if you're not, if you haven't used one of these, the chances are recovery. Sorry, chances of recovery are, are fairly low. If uh, if you can use an AED and CPR within a few minutes, there's a you know a pretty good chance of recovery. Anyway, so yeah, this this is what I carry around. Uh, it's. Uh, you can buy these second hand, obviously I bought this one second hand, it's absolutely fine, been updated to the latest software. Um, two of these images here need to be changed because the, the voice instructions have changed very slightly and you can change the stickers or apply stickers to reflect those voice changes. Just started it up. Stay calm. Check responsiveness. Call for help. Open airway. Check breathing. Attach defib pads to patient's bare chest. What this does is monitors the number of shocks given, it also monitors the elapsed time. Uh, Attach defib pads to patient's bare chest. It won't do anything now obviously because it's waiting for a signal from the pads and then it will determine whether it's a shockable waveform uh, and if so it will tell you and then you have to press the button. Uh, it will tell you how to do the compressions, breaths uh, and, uh, and absolutely everything there. As I say, if it's not a shockable waveform, hope the ambulance gets there pretty smartish and carry on with your uh, CPR. There's not much else you can uh, do uh, in that situation. Uh, as I said before, I think this is probably one of the best units around because it does have that facility to tell you whether your compressions are being done correctly. And I'll pack that away in a minute. Uh, and that's kind of it really. I, I think we'll do a little poll on the forum and uh, just see if anyone's got any first aid training, whether they've ever thought about it, what's in place in your workplace if, uh, if anything and uh, who has an AED or which workplaces uh, actually have one. The, uh, the latest thing, I think they're trying to roll this out countrywide, is there'll be an AED in a public place, it'll be in a locked cabinet perhaps outside a supermarket, we know where the cash machines are and uh, the cabinet is very secure but it has a combination uh, lock uh, to it and the, uh, the way to get access is to dial 999 and the uh, emergency services will give you the access code so the ambulance will be on its way uh, and they'll give you the code pretty much 